I miss a sliding table on my last table saw that I sold and haven't really been happy with that Craig um, miter gauge that I bought. So I decided to try one of these Incra miter sleds. I was going to build this sled, but I um, just decided to give this a chance because it looked kind of like my uh, my old table saw, a sliding table. So you can see it arrived in good shape. Uh, it was shipped by UPS and amazingly there was basically no damage whatsoever to the package. Um, it was really packed well and you know everything had extra cardboard, extra heavy cardboard around it and stuff to protect it. So it didn't you know arrive in good condition. And uh, there were two boxes there. This one here actually was um, stapled up pretty good and this one contained the uh, fence itself for it and uh, you can see it's aluminum amidized. Uh, if you look at it you can see that that end piece on there is a completely different color it's a, like they and they just cut it and they never cleaned it up or anything it's all just a total mess they left everything you know the way they cut it and there's two different colors on between the fence and that end piece so i'm really surprised at the poor quality that they you know Anchor has here and you can see every cut that they did they uh nothing was cleaned up or anything just uh looks like they ground them and sanded them later and just left all the dirt on them it's pretty surprised about that and then packed inside that there's actually the uh the other slider to allow that to extend out and you know that looked pretty pretty nice too but everything just kind of needed a good clean up Now, the only reason I really purchased this was because Rockler last weekend had a 20% off coupon, so I decided to give it a try. Um, I wouldn't really pay the normal price for it. and You can see it's got all these split scales that kind of slide for adjustment and stuff, but one of them there had a pretty good kink in it before they put it in place. So, you know, that's another quality issue that I didn't expect from Incra, but I guess uh, everything's going downhill these days. So then there was the main box here, and that was all packed in there pretty good. The um, That flip stop was, well, there was a clamp there, and then that flip stop was kind of just taped to the edge of the thing there, and it chipped the edge of the table all up, you can see. And um, actually, it, uh, the anodizing on that was pretty crappy job, too. It was all spotty in different colors, and you can see where... You know, the way it was just sitting in there, it got damaged too, um, marks on it and stuff. So that's another thing I didn't expect from it. But it was, you know, it was packaged good. Um, and uh, it, it, it's a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be because on the, um, they advertised it to be able to cut a 23 by 34 panel. You know, with a like a zero clearance type cut, but it it looks like it's not gonna. And I'll show you in a little while. So to start assembly, you first have to take these uh, two pieces apart that are screwed together on it. Uh, a couple of Phillips head screws. They just kind of kept things from banging around in there, and that was a a real good thing to you know keep everything tight like that. And this is the um, this is the end board that goes on there. And then there's the uh, the miter gauge there mounted to the other board. And there's also the uh, the secondary aluminum track that's screwed on there. You just have to remove the one screw to uh, get that loose. And then there's the uh, miter bar. Now, this is, they gave you really good instruction manuals, too, here to, for everything. But this is the one thing that I should have bought instead of that Craig uh, miter gauge that I bought. I've never really been happy with that, and I'll show you at the end why. I was just trying to cut some panels for my router table and had a problem. Now, they tell you you should um, set up for mounting on the left-hand side. And that's a recommended mounting for a uh, right-hand tilt saw, but... My saw actually tilts to the left hand, and I'm still going to mount it on the left hand side because if you look at it, you can see the blade always references back on the arbor there. So um, when I, 
use a dado head or anything. I don't want to mess up the insert, so that's why I'm sticking with this for now. So the first thing you have to do is uh, put that miter slide there together and a little piece that goes on there to catch in the T-slot. And then you go back and you um, adjust it. Now there's instructions for different ways to adjust it for different uh, saw slot sizes. And mine just needed the, uh, the weight side there, to, the left hand side to be adjusted. And um, I have to tell you, those screws are really, they're, they're kind of like a really super tight, probably an interference thread or something like that to keep them from backing off. So you really do have to crank on them, but um, it's just, this, my, this uh, bar just uh, so smooth in there once you get it adjusted right. You, I mean, you can see you really, you really do have to crank on them and, uh, you know, stress them and then back off a little bit and stuff. But, um, the bar is extremely rigid and it just, um, it, it just, uh, you can get it just so slide so smooth. It's not like the Craig one where those little screws stick out and you fiddle around with them and, um, you hit each screw and you get a different, you know, amount of force on it it seems like and they do shear off very easily these are um i really like this adjustment and this uh, steel bar here so you know i did you could see i did have to really wank on those things but it took a while but it's really um it's just a perfect fit now but the one thing this thought this does is this sled actually um you lose a half inch cutting depth on the blade because of the thickness of the sled, but that doesn't really matter to me because I'm not going to use it for anything that's really that thick anyway. So I just went back and forth and, you know, tweaked a little bit here and there until I, you know, I felt like I had a real nice smooth movement on it and um, down to zero play and, uh, and it's time to, to go on to the next part of it. And there's a quarter 20 bolt that you just have to remove. I'm, I'm pretty amazed because this is all actually inch hardware. It's the first tool that I've assembled in years, it seems like, that uh, I didn't need my metric tools for. So first thing you do is you have to um, get the uh, screw holes in that slider bar lined up with the uh, countersunk holes in the tabletop there. And they're really just like a perfect fit. And once once you get them in there and tighten them up, everything is just uh, lined right up. You, there's no movement in it or anything. They did a really good job at, um, you know, sizing the holes and the location of the, the threads and everything. So it's a perfect fit. So that just to get that one in, you have to kind of move that uh, all the miter gauge parts around and out of the way. But that doesn't take long. Um, then it's just the adjustment on this miter gauge is just so unique the way it works the way it um, works on indexes on half degree intervals and actually you have wet V's locked into um, you know V grooves here so there's no play or anything at all and um, everything is actually fully adjustable should it ever go off so um, it looks like it's you know, like gonna be a uh, really great system as long as all the V's are put in there in the right place. And you can see there, that, that thing just slides so smooth and so tight. It, it's basically like a sliding table. I'm real happy with the fit. Then you have the uh, this waste board here that you just um, have to screw on to that rail there. So once you get that in place, everything tightened down. Uh, it tells you just uh, cut, cut it there, and that's going to be your... Um, Basically, uh, your zero clearance cut line for all your cuts to keep from chipping out later. And so that cut is pretty critical, and you know that's why I wanted to keep it on that side of the blade because the blade is always indexed against the arbor, you know. And if you put a date or anything, it would go out the other way. Then, uh, then came this aluminum adjustable track. You had to adjust that, they said, and. I put that in there and I tried cranking on that as hard as I possibly could. I just could not. Nothing would move. Um, still lots of play in it. Stuff like that. It was, uh, you can see it just uh, had like, you know, 
couple bunch of thousands playing it stuff and no matter what I did trying to crank those uh those bolts down I just couldn't get them any tighter and that there uh, would have been nice if they had used a similar type setup to the other side because uh you know this turned to be out to be a problem and it was like wedges and stuff in there that uh, pulled up on the back side that looked like it was supposed to spread the track in those um, two areas. But what happened was it looked like when they machined the uh, the grooves in the top. Yeah, I got really angry about then. But when I looked at it, they machined the, uh, there the wedges on the bottom. But they machined grooves in the top there but they only went maybe about a third of the way through the uh, material there so there was no way that anything could expand or move um so finally i just got mad and i got out a chisel and a hammer and i took this this was an old chisel i sharpened up and i was able to um cut through the actual um aluminum that they they didn't machine so that it would spread a little bit when i tightened up that wedge so I don't know if, you know, I don't think this is the way it's supposed to be because those things had to open up in order for it to fit right. And it looks like they may have uh, messed up the machining or something, just not gone deep enough to split it. So I got pretty much cut through, and then I got a really big Allen wrench, a, a big, real strong one to uh, get a little more power on it. And you can see I was finally started to be able to get stuff to expand in the center there where I had um, punched through with the chisel. So this is just another one of those little things that, you know, make me wonder um, how how Anchor has been making these things for probably 12, 15 years. And, um, you know, how many people have had problems like this besides me? It, uh, it just seems like all the bugs would have been worked out by now, but uh, they definitely weren't. And then that one there, I didn't quite, I only got one side popped through and it wouldn't move enough. So I wound up having to uh, split it a little bit more on the other side there. Cut through a little bit more of the aluminum. So yeah, so you can see I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not real super happy with the way this thing went together. But I did get it, and, uh, you know, finally I got it adjusted. And it's kind of it's kind of finicky. I mean, you can get them. It's real hard to get them perfect. You can uh, play with them and get them there. They're a little bit rough, but, uh, you know, I did get it so it'll work for that side. And you have to screw this other board on, the piece that you cut off the other side. And you have to... Um, actually pick a set of holes so that you're going to be trimming it again so you have to get that miter sled out of the way and then move this over so all those screws actually they lined up perfect and um you know went together right and stuff but the the next thing that i found out was you um you screw this together then you have to go back and cut it to um to get your zero clearance on the other side and the, with the location of those two bump outs, how they had only, um, you know, tightened in the track in those two areas, the first uh, couple inches of the uh, cut there are, are not accurate. And then the last couple inches where the second one goes off, the whole thing transfers, so it's not accurate. So it would have been nice if there was um, a little more support, like a third one of those in there, and have them spread out a little bit further. But, you know, I guess this is what you live with. So I got that that trim there, and now it's time to just kind of set everything together and see how it looks. And you can see those tracks are kind of painy ass because they started uh, spreading at the bottom too. But you know, luckily you don't have to move that side, so I guess it'll be okay. And the other side just moves perfect. It just slides, you know. It's really a great track setup. And it's time to, to put these uh, this fence together. And there's a couple T-nuts that go in and um, 
couple socket head cap bolts. Everything is like a quarter 20 socket head cap. And you can see how that just uh, slides in there. And they do give you a big uh, ball driver to fit these. Um, for some reason, it's really snug in the, the things and hard to to, um, to twist off center and get out of the screws at times. So, you know, that was a, kind of a sticky thing. And then uh, I'm going to have to go back to and adjust all these tracks. But it's kind of hard to see there. But there's a kink in that one. Before they put it in, it looks like they uh, somebody put a, a good kink in it and then slid it in anyway. So that's another thing I'm not happy with. And those pieces there didn't actually uh, line up right either when you tighten down the screws. It's funny. I got those two pieces together and I spent some time going back trying to wipe out all the grit that they had gotten in the uh, the tracks there. And you can see how the collar of those two pieces is completely different there too. The anodizing different collar on that little end piece and the rest of the parts. So, you know, that's another thing that I'm not really happy with either. And you can see how the front face of it doesn't quite line up perfect either. I guess for uh, the price that they charge you, I guess I expect a little bit better. But then uh, you have to put this on the um, the miter gauge head there, the track, and there's a couple T-nuts that come with that, and you just have to put them on there with some more socket head cap screws that use that same tool, get them started, and then the, um, the fence actually slides right on there. And just make sure you leave it back a little bit from the blade when you put them on there. and um, Just kind of two screws there, tighten it down. And it's, it's really nice how this, uh, you know, all this, uh, it's such a positive stop at each angle that you adjust it to and stuff. Uh, I don't need that miter set gauge anymore and stuff like that so you know in the end that that craig jig with the miter set cost almost as much as this did so um this is really a big upgrade and then there's a little bracket that goes out there to support the end of the fence and lock it down and really keep things from moving and uh, that's a really great feature that gives it a lot of extra support on there too yeah that bracket's a lot like the one that was on my uh, delta sliding table and they do have good instructions to, uh, you know, be able to go through and make all the adjustments. And they tell you which screws to tighten first and, you know, how to how to line everything up. So I got the fence on there and then they said to check it for square against the uh, cut edge there. And actually from the factory that was really, uh, you know, just perfect right on. So I didn't have to loosen these screws for adjusting it. I just made sure they were tight. So that, you know, was set good the way it came. And then you can see here how this little thing will rock to one degree or half degree intervals and lock right in there. So I got that set on zero and then that there actually locks in at the, uh, the different intervals up above. So everything is uh, really locked in there positive at the uh, zero number right now. Now you get this little flip stop over there, and there you can see the anodizing on it. It's really a pretty bad job. It's all spotty and uh, scratched up and stuff like that. So, you know, that, that could have been better, too. It could have been wrapped in something or, you know, even it looks like it was all spotty before they wrapped it. It looked like it was a process. But there is an um, adjustable bar there, and uh, that nice flip stop there that works anywhere along the length of the fence. And that bar can be pulled out. And there's two uh, shorter ones that can go in there to have two uh, different stops set up also for, um, you know, cuts and stuff like that. Or maybe mortises or um, cutting tenons on the end or something. But And then this, uh, this thing indexes, but it's got like teeth that it indexes in. So you're kind of got to got to lock it in you know pretty close to where you want it i'm gonna have to get the gate the scale set up perfect and um there's not much you know you can do and there you can see that other end piece how it sticks out 
a little bit in front of that other fence and it actually hangs up it's it's not flush it would have been better if it was back the other way you know rather than being sticking out so i'm probably gonna have to take that and uh, machine it off a little bit on the front to make everything work so you know that's one of the other things i don't like about it and then there's a you know adjustment here so you can actually uh, shift that if it's locked into the teeth there and stuff and then there's two little round pins that you can that come with it too and it did come with an extra set of those little um, nylon tighteners for the, the guides in case they wear and it came with some extra um, Made rulers here in case you want to go the other way and you know pretty much uh, it, it comes with really good instructions on of how to, to set it up and everything else and how to you know set it for your miter slot and stuff now um, it did it did also come with this really nice uh, clamp here um, looks really well made and I think that should be really good on miters and stuff to to help lock them down and keep things from slipping when you're doing it uh, that just has a, a piece of aluminum there and there's a bolt that goes in there and then there's a, a pivot point there that actually it doesn't go in that way it slides in from the side but there was a uh, a big burr on the, there from where they machined that pocket out of there you can see they left it in there they should have they should have removed that too that made that kind of hard to get in you had to pound it in and uh then there's just a nut that goes on there so i'm gonna i'm gonna have to say you know from what i've seen so far it's uh this is made in america but the quality is no better than the chinese stuff i've purchased over the years and then uh i Grab the piece of plywood to cut, and you can see this is an 18-inch piece. Now they said you could cut 23 by 34, but actually it's just an 18-inch piece, and you can see it's kind of unsupported off the end of that one side, and it's uh, going to splinter out there and stuff. Um, for some reason, they made that sled a little bit shorter, but it did it did cut in a perfect 90 degrees of my six framing squares this is the only one that's a uh, perfectly square so uh, you know I know that it did do a good job and it would have been nice if they had just taken off uh, you know a little bit off the back there and just put it on the front so you would have a uh, zero clearance cut when you're cutting uh, pieces at least 18 inches wide and you know they advertised 23 so it would have been nice if it was even longer than that but I decided to, uh, you know, just to play with the adjustment on it there, and you can see that it's really easy to to set this. And um, you know, I want to go to 45 degrees. There's no worried about you know, not to be worried about loose pins and things being shaky and having to use a um, you know a secondary gauge to set it up. Uh, I I won't know until I you know get into doing more cuts how accurate it is, but it sure looks like it's going to be perfect. And once you lock that down on both ends, it's uh, you know it's all ready to go there, and nothing's gonna move. Now I went back and um, first cut. I didn't check the fence, but I went back because it just didn't look right when I put a piece of wood up against it. And sure enough, the uh, the whole fence was uh, tilted. Now there's good instructions that show you how to adjust that, and basically that front fence uh, just kind of floats. And there are a couple nuts there and uh, some set screws that allow you to uh, actually adjust that angle right in which really is a, a really nice feature too so you never really have to worry about this thing getting uh, you know knocked out of whack because you can always adjust it and bring it back in so that's just a just a matter of uh, you know loosening a couple nuts and tightening ones on the other side and um, pretty much uh, they both once you you adjust one side the other side pretty much follows it so you don't have to worry too much you just go back and snug everything down and that was really easy to you know get everything right on and then just go back and snug it up so I really do like the uh, the adjustability of it because um, you know how things always go off a little bit and uh, it's hard to get them back 
So I got my first piece cut clamped in there and I'm doing a cut and it did a you can see it did a nice clean cut um, not to move that clamp really is nice especially when you're doing miters like that to keep them from shifting <laughs> then I wanted to just do another one on the same side so I could you know put them back to back later and uh, check the 90 so you can see that that waste board there on the other side really does a good job of uh, you know keeping keeping the cut off piece supported did a nice job of cutting it and then I uh, just went back took two seconds to index it back to the zero and everything locks in place and uh, you know, I decided to just try to do a 90 on it and you know it, it does it just slides really nice and smooth and stuff would have been nice uh, if they you know had watched some of the other problems that I had but you know I think it's gonna work in the end glad I didn't pay the full price for it though and there you can see that uh, I flipped I cut those pieces and you can see no matter which way you flip them they um they actually uh, did give me a uh, really nice cut and that a mana blade really does a really great job too so you can see no matter which way you flip them they uh, they're square so it did cut square and the 45s they were you know both cut at the same side so if there was any error it would show and you know they did come out good too so it looks like it's going to be real accurate in the end so i'm happy with it now if you look there you'll see that i uh, actually moved that board forward one set of screw holes um it would be nice if they made a longer waste board that you could buy so it would match everything else but uh, looking at that you can now see that I can cut my 18 inch panels fully supported there so that makes me a little bit happier um, it would be nice if uh, like I said if uh, Incra saw this and they actually came out with a longer one that you could buy so you didn't have to have that gap on the back side but this you know this will get me by for now and um, maybe I'll find some red laminate someday and make a matching one but you know anyhow and there's a there's the um, you know that stop and everything so it looks like it's gonna work out good and then this is how you adjust that fence out and the stop out and it does go out to like five feet it looks like and you know you can use the stop at that point too so and it's all very rigid with the um, that extra bracket on there holding it together the only thing is they like I said they don't align right when you tighten that screw down there so I think it'll be a good addition to the shop now this is why I wound up uh, buying it because I was trying to cut some of those panels for my new router table that I'm building and I was with bigger panels of three quarter inch plywood when you get back a little bit that aluminum bar is kind of like a rubber band and I noticed that my panels just weren't cutting straight and they were getting like radiuses on them and stuff and then I realized the minute you um, get any kind of a uh, a heavy panel on there and try to cut it that that gauge the uh, the aluminum actually just flexes like rubber there you can see it until it's fully engaged in the miter saw so that thing's really only good for like uh, you know doing short cuts that are maybe like six eight inches at the most wide once you uh, start to back it out a little bit it's um, you know basically uh, it's no good and you can see it's a it's aluminum bar and it does have some big holes through it too so they could be where it's flexing too but um you know i've never really been super happy with this gauge as you've probably seen and uh kind of glad to have replaced it now with something that looks like it's a um you know much better unit that's gonna serve my needs better and you'll be seeing a lot more of this in the future thanks for watching please subscribe